Hey everyone, this is Austin Schur here with We Write About Music, and today I'm so happy to have back on once again Wildcat Hawkins. We are going three years in the past today to talk about an old but still great song called Can't Stop It With You. I'm super excited to talk to them all about it. How have you been? What's going on? I've been good, Austin. Uh, it's been a busy summer for me. I did a few dance projects on some busted legs, but I'm taking time off the heel now and it feels good. Nice. Yeah, that's what I, I mean, we can talk about a ton of things around the song, but this song was originally released on a record in 2021, which I, at this point, three years ago, but you've just put out a music video for it in July of 24. What was the thought process going into that and why this song specifically? The thing about lo-fi music is that it conveys a power signal sometimes, whether it's supposed to or whether it's supposed to or not, it is conveyed. So in this type of energy that we're feeling today, um, it's actually different than it was a few months ago because balance has been restored actually to the earth, actually. Yeah. And that's a good thing, not a bad thing, actually. So it's a better time to introduce a sound like this than it was a few years ago, is what I'll say about it. Okay. And uh, to release it now is better because people's ears are more prepared for this. And if you've noticed, a lot of people are looking for lo-fi music that may not have been looking for it a couple of years ago. Very true. So that, that's good. Um, Jupiter moved a little bit and uh, it's where it needs to be now for me to come onto the scene stage left in a meaningful way. Totally. Actually, um... so. Yeah, I mean, I love that. I think it's actually become semi-common for people to go into their back catalog and create videos around it to sort of bring attention on what was there in the past. Um, but I mean, even looking at your current discography, this is way different from what you're making now. And it shows just kind of like the breadth of what you're able to make. What was your headspace three years ago to make this music? This was uh, from a collection that I created called pre Copernican, and it's uh, the name was meant to be arcane, basically, and to seem esoteric. So what it references is the idea that um, there was a time where there was a Ptolemaic model of the universe mm -hmm. that was a Ruth Goldberg machine uh, that yeah. was created, uh, explained discrepancies in astronomical observations. And... Uh, Copernicus was the man that that said that there was actually a heliocentric universe. Sure. And Ga Galileo went into exile to establish the ideas of Copernicus. But that's what I'm referencing here is this whole idea that I might be thinking that everything revolves around me, but I, I could be dead wrong about that, actually. <laughs> this, this could be a suggestion of my own ego, and it could be a big fat lie, I'm thinking. That's what I named okay. it after. So, so, so that's what it was named after. But it was just a lo-fi indie type of thing. Some of it's hip hop, some of it's kind of like indie, I guess you'd say. And this one is more like a short and sweet track with a dance feel to it. And uh, I recorded it in Eau Claire, Wisconsin during a time when I was getting ready to get divorced. And I was just wanted to be by myself, not hang out with my ex and just make a bunch yeah. of music. And that's what I did, so. I mean, I really like it. It's a very freeing and liberating just kind of feeling of a song. Um, and obviously so much of your music now comes from an improv point of view. You know, you you sit down on the piano and or you just play the guitar and you see what happens. But in this style of music, I feel that's a little bit more difficult to do. What was the actual production and process of making it? Yeah, definitely. This was a producer type of situation. So um I, I used some loops that were in GarageBand, and uh, I laid down a guitar, an acoustic guitar track, and uh, some vocals on, on a laptop at my place. There wasn't a, I didn't book out to studio or anything like that. Sure. And uh, so I put together this mix, and I thought it was a pretty good sound. So um, the thing I dig about this song is that it differs from my other songs in the sense that it's just simple and catchy, basically. Right. <laughs> I get that. I get that. 
but like did it take a, did it take right a lot of did it take a sort of a lot of tinkering within GarageBand to put it together? Because you know, obviously, like I just said, so much of your music is like free flow. You you play what you're feeling. Whatever happens, happens, and you lay it down to tape. But in this situation, you have full control over the sounds that are coming out. So how much, you know, like, did it stem from a demo? Did it go through different waves before it became what it was? Um, you know, with some of my sounds, it's kind of like uh, some people consider it a glorified demo. But um, I like the sound that you get with rougher edges sometimes. Um, when you see stuff in concert, sometimes it's the fact that things are too overdriven and overly hot that sounds good, actually. Mm -hmm. and people like live music more than the studio version sometimes because of those kind of factors. And that's what it is. I sit down and I start recording. Um, well, I start uh, producing it, basically. I create a composition that I like. Um, I use some MIDI, and I just play that uh, with this Mellotron sound. Um, I create a Mellotron sound by uh, setting some parameters within GarageBand that I like for it. And then I, I play it on the keys on the laptop computer. Okay. That's how that is. So it's, it's kind of like uh, something that doesn't employ extra plugins that come sure. from something aside from uh, GarageBand. And I just sit down and do it. And uh, add a add a guitar track and track some vocals. Um, I use some type of auto tune for this type of vibe to roboticize yeah. it and watch. And I thought it sounded right for this song. And I just kind of keep it simple for this track. That's what I like about it. It's just a vibe that uh, the Prince fans <laughs> and the Michael Jackson fans both like this song. Right. I think the percussion of Prince, the Latin percussion type of influence is something I've always enjoyed. And this is kind of reminiscent a little bit, I'd say. Yeah, I fully agree. That's what I like about it is it's not trying to be overproduced or provide gimmicks or anything. It's lo-fi, which already means you know what to expect going into it, but it's chill. Like you can put it on in the background and relax to it, or you can really get into it and dance a little bit. And that kind of brings me a little bit more to the music video. Of course, we're going to have it linked so that everyone can watch. But I like that how you brought this song to life. The, the music video is as simple as the song is, but it's still fun. So wh what was like the blueprint for creating that? Did you have an idea before you went into it? I wanted the video to convey my own identity, which is a dropout, basically. <laughs> so okay. I'm, I'm in a I'm in a suburban area and I'm just out on a nature walk by myself because I'm a spiritual type of character and I like to be sure. in nature. And then it's just, hey, what if I set up my tripod with this uh, this action cam has a higher resolution than some of my other stuff? And yeah, let's just let's just ha get have some headphones in so that I can hear the music and just do a dance performance like this. And that was the idea Sweet. here. Cool. The, the T-shirt I'm wearing is a design I created myself. Oh, okay. I just think that sometimes you have to make your own clothes. Otherwise, it's a sellout is what I've been thinking <laughs> for years. I agree. That's why I keep it simple <laughs> with, with my clothes. Um, and as for the actual title of the song, Can't Stop It With You, um, you know, you mentioned that going through this time three years ago was transformative. What does the song title actually represent for you? It was meant to be almost a cliche. It's the kind of thing that you would expect to hear some of these. It's kind of like quintessential <laughs> pop to me. Yeah. And it's just meant to be about getting over the top of the feminine consciousness is what it's about. Because okay. there, there have been people that don't like me around sometimes. The scene, sometimes when the scene sees me, they think, oh, it'd be nice if you weren't around, Wildcat, because we like to open up doors. We like to open up rooms specifically so we don't have to stand next to people sometimes that's actually a lot of what the music scene can be at times sure. and in ways i'm not just trying to get out a metaphorical battle axe and chop the scene in half um but i it's kind of a justin bieber world for me where the scene isn't exactly what it is mm -hmm. that's what i would like to state so um 
that's that's my world is kind of like that because when you've got a certain type of talent that uh can be recognized through a power signal more so than any type of descriptive anything then that's when you just can't stop it and that's the thing that makes sense and then um, if my ex if my ex hates my dancing <laughs> she can't stop it either that's true but how could she hate it it's so good you know <laughs> it's it's relaxing because it's not too much you know you're not you're not going out of your way to 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 try too hard you know what i'm saying i think it fits the vibe of the song she probably would that, that sounds mean she'd probably like this one but uh pe people okay, sometimes okay. people sometimes don't understand my dancing and they cut it down sometimes like other people have done that too, but uh, I think that I've proven this summer with a couple of projects that there's something to what I do as a dancer. And okay. uh, I think anyone would probably think that if they saw my recent YouTube videos. Sure. I think that makes a little bit more sense. <laughs> um, now, this is sort of an interesting question. Again, this song came out three years ago. I feel that three years, especially these last three years, have been transformative for any person um speaking on your music though it's gone through so many different changes from the you know strict improv piano to more grunge sound and you've even thrown in a little hip-hop at the same time will you potentially be revisiting a sound like this or is this something that you think is just going to sit in the past what i'm seeing right now for my future is uh, I need to get into a lane where a good sale can be made for me. And uh, yeah. what I think is that some people have lamented the fact that the good sale seems to be found with pop and hip hop almost sure. exclusively this in this day and age. But for me to look more like Michael Jackson with my presentation is playing to my own strength. Sure. And, and also to be a rapper and in many cases just the producer is playing right. to my strength as well. So that's what I foresee. What I foresee is for the time being, I may do some acoustic shows soon because I'm just ready to rock some acoustic stuff. Of course. But what I see for uh, for my professional ambition is to be a producer for rap and hip hop and also to put out rap albums where I may awesome. actually have somebody else, somebody else producing it. Okay. But it's a, it's a, I'm defined as a nerd rapper nowadays and also a <laughs> sure, pop, sure. pop musician. Okay. Pop music. So that's how I view myself is as a nerd rapper, more or less, and a pop musician who is a dancer. Got it. That makes sense. Um, listen, you know, the last time we spoke was maybe a couple months ago, towards the beginning of the summer. You had mentioned that you had had some plans for the summer to maybe take a little bit of time off get out there, play your music, and just, you know, I suppose, work on yourself. What does the last couple months look like for you? I've been real busy. I released this project called Take Your Gods and Throw Them in the Trash. Okay. And what, the, what this is, is the full expression of the lo-fi zeitgeist. So every track is an improvised piece on a synthesizer sound. So there's no piano or guitar to it. Sure, it's sure. all synth. It's all on my Roland synth. And what I think is that this is uh, a very a very good collection there that anyone might want to check out if they want to hear some real power in music. That might be a place to look. Got it. Yeah, I would I would direct them there as well. Um, nice. Anything else that's been going on? Uh yeah. There's been some some community building on YouTube. I've been trying to reach some people and create natural attraction in my life. As I've told you, and as it's been chronicled now, yeah. um, I had a problem with natural attraction being simply busted in my life. There was none. Right. But I've got some actual uh, people that are nerds that like me for me have found out about me and the cat signals in the air and some things are happening. So Very I think cool. that what you don't want in a marketing path is to is to um, have the wrong people to the party first. Okay. Because then the brand is built from the outside in. For me, because I want everything to be 100% real and authentic and uh, never a sellout, what I need is to get 
the people that are big time nerds that have no place to go that they feel is really cool for them sure. to get there first. And then eventually it's just a party for everyone. Everyone's invited, but uh, you know, everyone will be probably last to get there rather than first. So I've been doing a little bit of that. I may be setting up a discord soon and that's oh, very cool. outgoing. That's outgoing for me. So we'll see. How yeah, that, that seems like the best way to build a community right now is getting people on that to have the conversation. Yeah, I, I need to heal my legs. My legs are kind of in a bad way right now, okay. but, uh, I'm thinking about trying to play a lot of basketball games pretty soon and see if I'm playing at a high level. I think I may be, I'm not sure. Um, but that's something I'm looking at there. Sweet. And, uh, doing some martial arts. Uh, the NBA is something I'm pretty lukewarm about, uh, <laughs> because of sure. Adam Silver and the Bone James are some guys that I'm not happy with. I understand. Yeah. That's, and, uh, uh I, I totally get that. Um, so, so I look at it this way. Um, if someone decides they want to throw me a 10 day contract or sign me for an entire season to become a non-traditional player, because it's happened before Dean Garrett signed with the Timberwolves as a 30 year old rookie. Yeah. Uh, my court, legs, my court legs are not 40 years old guys. Cause I haven't been right. getting up and down the hardwood. Like, like I Ray Allen was in amazing shape at the age of 40 and I am too kind of like Yarmer Yager and Tom Brady, but I haven't been getting up and down the hardwood the entire time. Sure. So the thing about me is there could be like a two year Yarmar Yager ish career, perhaps if it really makes sense. Now I think Warner brothers wants to see me not get arrested for six months and yeah. they're busy promoting a Robert Pattinson movie. And I liked the first Pattinson movie. I thought it was good. So I think that's there, but, um, that's really my world right there, Austin, in a nutshell. I understand. And listen, before we wrap up here, I want to know, is there anything else important about this song that you think people should know before they listen? When I make this music, <laughs> I envision myself dancing on stage. And there's no one I'd rather do a dance routine with than together with Anna Earhart and also okay. perhaps Billie Eilish, Billie Eilish also perhaps doing nice. some dancing there also because when you look at the vibe these girls are swimming in something of a real magic and i'm not going to say much more about it but the thing is the thing that really puts an artist over the top of the feminine and i mean beyond over the top is power and sure. what i've seen with these two girls is uh quite a power is what nice. i'd say about that okay well, listen, I, you know, as always, I want to thank you for taking the time. I'm, I'm really happy that we could kind of take a look at your past discography. Because the thing is, is like your music moves so fast in and out of genre and just the frequency of releases. Sometimes it's nice to go back and just kind of see what was there that might have been missed. Um, and I think it also gives people the opportunity for if they haven't listened to any of your music to be like, hey, there's so much more. It's not just what's recent. You know, I love chatting with you, Austin, and I love being able to step into a room with people that are um, some of the smart ones, I'd say. And uh, you've just done an amazing job at creating that. So hats Thank off you. to you, Austin. And uh, I'll be, I'm going to be have to come back because there's so much to talk about. So I'll be back pretty soon. Of course. I'm looking forward to talk about whatever you want. In the meantime, though, I want everyone to know that we will have the links so you can listen, share, and follow along. The song is called Can't Stop It With You. This is Wildcat Hawkins. And as always, I just want to thank you for taking the time out of your day to be here. It means a lot. Hey, good to see you again, Austin. And we'll chat you soon. as well. Have an amazing rest of your day. Let's talk soon. Yeah, see you wrong. All right. Bye-bye. <laughs>